The next organelle we're going to look at is cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton is like the skeletal and muscular system in human's body. Uh, their function is to maintain the structure and uh, provide movement sometimes. So cyt is a cytoskeleton. There's a cytoskeleton system. And when we talk about uh, muscles in AP1, when you learn the muscles, uh, you find the muscles have those microfilaments. Uh, these are the structures of the cytoskeleton. They maintain the structure and can they can also... Uh, create the movement so muscle can contract. So that's the cytoskeleton uh, inside maintain the structure. Okay, next one is called microvilli. Microvilli is this finger like structure called microvilli. Uh, its function is to increase the surface area. For example, in your small intestines, small intestines. Uh, that's the area for uh, for absorption. Uh, take the nutrients from the outside and into your body. So that's this. Uh, this is the say. This is the cell of your small intestines, and the molecule around here that's inside your GI tract. You want to move them from here into the cell. So if they are here inside your GI tract, we consider it's outside of the body. So for example, you accidentally swallow something into your mouth, and eventually after two days, it come out uh, from your anus out. The reason is it never go into your body. So if you want to go into your body, there's a absorption. The molecule need to go from the GI tract, actually goes through the cell membrane. And then from here, go into your blood. Now it's in your body. And you need a lot of surface area to increase the absorption rate. So the easiest way to increase the surface area is to create a lot of finger-like structure called microvilli. So microvilli, you have a lot of them in your small intestines and also large intestines. Their function is to increase the surface area. So these structures called the microvilli called the micro microvilli, they can significantly increase the surface area of your small intestines. When we look at the total surface area of your small intestines, small intestines is seven meters long. And with all those microvilli, the total surface area is about uh, 2,800 square feet. So it's, it's like a full tennis court. Next structure is called the centrosome. Centrosome, its function is to anchor the cell. It's provide the anchoring function. And some of the centrosome does not exist all the time. Uh, that's when you need it and you produce it. So uh, this is the example during the cell mitosis. Mitosis is when the cells, uh, their DNA, uh, after they duplicate DNA, the DNA will separate and eventually you create two new nucleus, the cell division. And in these two ends, you find these are the centrosome. Uh, they provide the anchoring. And then you have the uh, microfilaments, those cytoskeletal systems, going to attach each one chromosomes and they're going to pull them to two parts. So those centrosomes, they provide the anchoring function during mitosis. So that's a picture show you the mitosis. When the mitosis happens, uh, those chromatin contents become the chromosome. And the chromosome, you find that the two central zone start to appear. Uh, those two green ones, they are central zone in two ends. And now they start to divide. They pull those uh, chromosomes to two ends. And eventually you have two new nucleus. So we have uh, another lecture specific talk about the uh, mitosis. We will talk about each phase depends on what events happen. We have the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So this happens in mitosis. That's a cell division. And between mitosis, there's the interphase. That's when the cell do his own job. So centrosome provide the anchoring function. 
Okay. The next structure called cilia, the next organelle called the cilia. Cilia, they look exactly like um, micro, microvilli. So under the microscope, cilia and uh, microvilli, actually they look the same. So what's the difference? The difference is cilia move. Microvilli does not move. Let's go back to look at the microvilli. This is the microvilli. They just stay there. Uh, they don't move. So in the small intestines, large intestines, you have a lot of microvilli to increase their surface area. And in your airway, in your trachea, uh, in your bronchi, bronchus, you have a lot of cilia because they move. So in your airway, uh, you may have dirty particles move into your airway. And on the surface of the airway, that you have the mucus. Um, these mucus can trap dirty particles and cilia can start to move. So cilia will send uh, the dirty particle gradually to your throat and you can cough them out. So cilia move, microvilli does not move. Another place you can find the cilia is in the female's uh, body, those fallopian tube. You also have cilia uh, because the egg uh, they when the ovulation happen, egg is ovulated. Uh, egg will move to the fallopian tube, and eggs not like sperm. The egg could not swim, uh, so the egg gradually moved down the fallopian tube. Uh, the reason is due to those cilia. So inside the fallopian tube, you also have cilia. They can gradually send uh, the egg gradually go down in this way. And the sperm come from this direction. So uh, fertilization happens inside the fallopian tube. And the fertilized egg will gradually be moved down uh, because of cilia. So cilia, you find them in two places. One is in the fallopian tube. The second is in your airway. So in your airway, your bronchus, your trachea, you have the cilia. You can gradually move those, those uh, dirty particles out. Okay, next one is called the phalangula. And phalangula is one, uh, each cell have one phalangula. It's like one big tail. So a good example is uh, those sperms. Sperms, each sperm uh, have a phalangula. Uh, phalangula, the singular, phalangula is uh, plural. So sperm is the very unique cells. Uh, the, the nucleus is the head, and this is the cytosol. This is cell body, and this whole big tail is phalangula. Uh, so they, they are able to swim. They are able to swim. So to produce sperm in AP, uh, AP2, uh, you will learn the process. Those sperm cells will go through mitosis. Uh, actually goes through meiosis. Meiosis is the chromosome's number uh, decrease to half. So uh, they they can meet with the egg. So they will create a total 46 chromosomes. So each sperm actually have 23 chromosomes. And then they were gradually involved into those uh, sperm shape. So they have the phalangula. So these tails are the phalangula. And those phalangula, they are able to swim and they stay in the epididymis, this, this area, uh, superior to the testes. And then they will go through uh, the ductus deferus in AP2, you will learn this structure, and go out. And when they go out, okay, they have to swing through all this, uh, all this through the whole uterus, and eventually go to the fallopian tube, uh, because the egg, the egg is inside the fallopian tube. After ovulation, the egg comes from the ovary and goes through the fallopian tube and go to here. So the the swing have to uh, the sperm have to swing, and that's why they have a big phalangula. So eventually, uh, a small portion of those surviving sperm will reach here, and the uh, number one wins. Uh, that's the fertilization. So phalangula is a structure of the sperm. Okay, the last one is the ribosome. So we talk about ribosome when we talk about the rough ER. Rough ER is rough because they have ribosome. 
So ribosome uh, its function is to for translation because it provides the space for the translation to happen. That's from the mRNA to amino acid sequence, or sometimes people say protein, but technically it's an amino 1D amino acid sequence. Uh, it's not a protein yet because those amino acids need to be transported to the to the uh, Golgi apparatus, keep being modified uh, to have its 3D function, then we call it a protein. So ribosome help translation. And part of ribosome is rRNA. So part of this ribosome, ribosome have two units, like two magnet, they're gonna glue together. And when you have an mRNA comes, the string, like you see this string is mRNA. Uh, they come from, they come from the nucleus. So transcription, that's from the DNA to mRNA. It happened inside the nucleus and the mRNA will go through the nucleus pore. When it go out, outside the nucleus pore, there's the rough ER and rough ER has a lot of ribosome. So when the mRNA come to the rough ER, uh, this strain is mRNA and these, these balls, these are ribosome. So ribosome will come uh, like two, two magnets, they were glue, they were attached to mRNA. And once they attach the mRNA, uh, they will start a translation. Translation is from mRNA to the uh, amino acid sequence. So uh, these ribosome, right, ribosomes, they will help the translation to happen. And that's their function, produce protein, or we say polypeptides. Uh, they are not protein yet. Okay, let's stop here.